I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is episode six in my series, Black Box 101, where I teach you how to use Black Box to tune and troubleshoot your quadcopter. If you haven't watched the earlier episodes in the series, I suggest you check out the playlist down in the video description. Uh, they build on each other, and uh, as you may know, jumping in in the middle may leave you more confused than you started. In previous episodes, we discussed in a sort of academic sense what the P-term does, and then we looked at some examples of the P-term in flight. What we're going to do in this episode is look at what low and then moving to high P-term looks like in black box. So we're going to start here. I've got this black box log and the video already synced up. And if I go view header, you can see that in my PIDs, I've taken the P-terms down to 2.0. This is about as low as P-term can be in my experience and still be somewhat flyable. Once you get below about two, it starts to become very difficult to fly. You'll notice I've also taken the D term to zero because I want to see the sort of pure P term effects. Let's take a look at what the copter looks like while it's flying. So the copter is a very sloppy and mushy feel through the turns. You can see as I went through the turn, it kind of wallowed about. We can watch that again. See, it's kind of the nose dipped a little bit, kind of wallowed about. Let's take a look at what we're seeing in RC command and, uh, and the P-term. And again, let's just focus on the roll axis for now. So let's look at roll RC command gyro RC command, or gyro roll, yeah, and the P term on roll. Now one thing I want you to see is that we're sort of continuously seeing the gyro oscillating uh, around RC command. So here's RC command, which is the red line, the, the blue line is the gyro, and it's really sort of struggling to track RC command accurately. We can see that there's this constant uh, low frequency oscillation, and that's a sign of too low P gain. The P term is not strong enough to cause the gyro to track the RC command precisely. As we play forward, we'll see we begin to enter the turn. Again, notice this oscillation. The P term is opposing the gyro. Notice that when the gyro goes down, the P term goes up and vice versa. Because the P-term is opposing the gyro, that tells us that this is externally induced movement. The PID loop is fighting it, but is not really successful at fighting it. Now we see RC commands start to rise, and we should see that the P-term also rises and pushes the copter into the move. But we don't really see that. We see some pushes to the positive and also some pushes to the negative. And in fact, we see here as we enter the turn, the gyro is actually moving faster into the move than the PID loop would like. And we know that because the P term here is mostly at zero or negative. And that means that the PID loop is trying to slow the move down. We've pushed the copter into the right turn and we've sort of sloppily pushed it too hard. And now the copter is sort of overreacting and the PID loop is trying to fight the right turn. As we continue to go forward, we see again the P-term is kind of trying to push out of the move. Notice that the, uh, the gyro is positive, RC command is positive. That means that we are pushing the copter into the move and we are moving the direction that we're being commanded to move because they're both going to the same side of the axis. But notice that the P term is negative, which means that the PID loop is trying to actually fight this move and slow it down, which means it's happening faster than it's really being commanded to do. And as we return the stick to center, notice though that the gyro is just very sloppy in how it's tracking the RC command. The gyro is just all over the place and is not tracking RC command very precisely at all. There's all these crazy oscillations. Here we've got some prop wash oscillation. Let's see what that looks like with really low P gain. And it looks pretty much like prop wash oscillation, but if we watch it at full speed, it has a really soft and slow feel because uh, the, the magnitude and the frequency of prop wash oscillation has to do with how hard the P-term is pushing. And since the P-term isn't pushing very hard, we get a sort of a slow, floppy, sloppy prop wash oscillation. 
As we raise P term or P gain, we'll see that those oscillations become uh, sharper, more high frequency uh, in nature. Now let's take a look at a flip or a roll with really, really low P gain. Now, one of the things you'll see, and this is not a black box thing, but you'll see this in the camera, is that that soft bounce at the end, a soft, slow bounce. Let's watch it again. Now, there's multiple oscillations there, uh, but there, it's not a sort of a fast ringing oscillation. And if we take a look at what we see here, we see uh, the red line RC command go negative, right? We see the P term push negative. And we see the P term then uh, do the thing that we noticed in the last one where it pushes strong into the move and then it has to counteract the move because it pushed too hard and it overshot. That's a very common thing to see. What we don't see here with the low P gain is we normally would expect to see a strong push into the move, then a push out of the move to sort of slow down the overshoot. And then we would expect to see the line sort of track near zero in the middle of the flipper roll where where we were close to the right speed and then as the stick begins to recenter we would see another push out of the move to slow it down but we don't see any point where that p term kind of tracks near zero so we never really hit the correct angular rate here the pid loop is con sort of constantly behind the curve always trying to no go a little slower no go a little faster and never quite getting it right again because it doesn't have much authority look also at the gyro line here notice that the gyro line never really smooths out so we don't ever see the gyro line hit the correct angular rate and stay there where we're going faster, we're going slower, we're going a little faster, and then we slow down and we get this oscillation at the end. So now I'd like to show you uh, an extreme opposite example, which is what excessive P gain looks like uh, in black box. And let me just show you the header here, view header. We can see that here the PIDs are, well, again, uh, remember that black box viewer shows you the old style PIDs 7.0. In Betaflight, we would see 70 as the PIDs. Now, 70 is actually not that high of a P gain. I fly some of my copters with, with the PIDs at around 50 or 70, uh, and maybe some of them even higher than that, although not very many of them, not the 5-inch ones for sure. But 70 would not normally be radically excessive like you're about to see. And the reason that 70 is radically excessive in this case is because we have no D gain. And one of the effects of D gain, maybe the primary effect of D gain, is to uh, sort of damp down on P term oscillations. So there needs to be a balance between P and D. And in this case, since we have no D, we can't add very much P without getting bad oscillations. Even a small amount of D gain, like the 10 or 20 points of D gain that is the default in beta flight, would be enough to fly at 70, no problem. But since we don't have any, we're going to see that 70 is very, very excessive. And let's just take a look at what happens when I try to take off. Immediately, we're getting oscillations as soon as we raise the throttle. And if we take a look at those oscillations, we can see that we start with some sort of irregular oscillations, but as soon as the throttle comes up, we get these very regular sinusoidal style oscillations. And just as a reminder, those oscillations are a very clear sign of either excess P gain or inadequate D gain. It's really about the balance between P and D, but you could just sum it up as saying excess P gain because we're, we're, we're seeing the sinusoidal smooth oscillation because we're reaching the mechanical limits of the system, the physical ability of the motors and ESCs to, to move the copter back and forth just as fast as they possibly can. And that's why we see these smooth oscillations. Now we're gonna see those oscillations pretty much anytime we raise the throttle. And the reason is that the, the PIDs are, are acting on the throttle set point. So as we raise the throttle set point, the motors become more powerful, and then the effect of the, the PIDs becomes more pronounced, and we get this sort of feedback situation where the, the, the controller just feeds back into itself and has these oscillations. See, even, even here, we're getting the oscillations even though they're not blatantly obvious in the video. And I know I just paused it. Let me play it back to you again. I'll play the whole thing back to you. Notice that the second time I raised the throttle, the P term is still oscillating, the gyro is still oscillating, even though we're not hearing these blatant strong oscillations. Watch. Bad. See, even there, 
we can see that the p-term is strongly oscillating even though we don't necessarily hear it or see it in the camera and this is i wouldn't want to fly a copter that was doing too much of this we're still seeing these regular same sort of they're mostly sinusoidal they're not very irregular and that means that the copter is really it's it's barely hanging on right now but as soon as we do anything like sharp turns or jam the throttle it's going to get really out of sorts so we did okay there we jammed the throttle and we didn't get a ton of oscillation and maybe the reason for that is that this copter is flying with tpa if we look we can, where's tpa in here let's find it there we go there i found it tpa uh 10 with a break point at 1650 uh, so we're getting a small reduction, a 10% reduction in PIDs uh, once the throttle gets above 1650. And and, and that 10% reduction in PIDs may be enough. Uh, 70 was just the point where I started seeing these oscillations get bad. And maybe that 10% reduction as the throttle goes up is just enough to get us out of this feedback mode uh, and into a, you know, a mode where the PIDs can sort of handle themselves. It's, it is a little surprising when we're seeing... Uh, oscillations this bad at mid throttle that as soon as I raise the throttle that they don't get much worse. I wonder if we were to set TPA to zero, w whether we would see that as soon as I raise the throttle, things would get really bad. There, you hear that oscillation there? Listen. Right there. That, that is something you want to be listening for when you're tuning line of sight. That is definitely a sign that the, I think of that as the copter feeling nervous. It's like a like a you know a nervous stallion that kind of wants to run and it's kind of rolling its eyes a little bit and it's kind of twitching and you're like oh my god this guy's about to go and when you see me put the copter into sharp turns you'll see what I mean big oscillation big oscillation there did you see how that oscillation almost kind of grew on itself look at the magnitude here so the magnitude being the height of the oscillation. Notice it's a little irregular here. We haven't gotten into this sinusoidal mode. And then as it gets stronger and stronger, we get into that sinusoidal mode, right? Oh, it starts to break up a little and then it comes back and then it gets weaker. You see the magnitude is smaller here and then it gets stronger again. And even as I lower the throttle, see here I'm lowering the throttle, but it's still, it's still getting quite strong and it, it takes a minute to subside. That ability for the P-term to sort of feed back into itself and for the oscillations to grow and get stronger instead of sort of dying out on their own, that again is a clear sign of excess P-gain. And there, you see, I, I left the throttle up there uh, as I normally would. And you can see that there was no sign that this oscillation was ever going to settle down until I backed off the throttle. A clear sign of excess P-gain. And again, now what does that flip look like? You can see that in the flip, the P term is really going crazy. It's going bonkers. It's changing sign, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. It just cannot make up its mind where it wants to go. Again, a good looking flipper roll will usually have a strong push into the move, then a push out of the move, and then it'll be centered through the middle of the move at close to zero magnitude, meaning that it, it basically achieved the correct angular rate. And then at the end, we'll get a push out of the move and, and maybe a little bit of oscillation. This is just all over the place. And if we keep watching, Again, it, it just was not going to back down, is it? We're getting these crazy oscillations all the time. Now, this is a really extreme example. And, and frankly, you, you probably don't need black box to tell you you've got excess P gain. The main advantage of knowing to look for this is if somebody says to you, hey, can you look at my black box log uh, and tell me what you think of my tune? If you don't have video and you see this type of oscillation, it's a clear sign that the, either the P term is way too high or the D term needs to be raised. But usually you don't want the P term this high. I mean, we've got zero D term. If you had any D term at all and you were seeing something like this, you probably need to back off the P gain a little bit, uh, to get the copter back under control. Now, one more thing I want to point out about this, and that is that as bad as these oscillations are, and, and if left unchecked, these oscillations can cause you to crash if you're, if you're not a, a great pilot especially, the magnitude of these oscillations, or rather the, the frequency of the, these oscillations is low enough that the motors absolutely can keep up with what they're being commanded to do. And if we look at the uh, frequency of the oscillations, let's just zoom in a little bit and see. I'll use the M key to mark 
and I'll go one wavelength, we can see that the frequency here is about 14 hertz. The motors are more than capable of changing speed at 14 hertz like they're being commanded to do. Uh, and so you're not going to smoke a motor or, or you're probably not even going to cause a desync uh, in, and if you have decent equipment anyway, modern equipment based on P-term oscillations, you can raise the P-term almost as high as you want and the copter will become completely unpleasant to fly, but it probably won't smoke anything. It'll only damage something if you lose control of it because of the oscillations and you crash. So the P-term is relatively safe to play around with. And in fact, if you're trying to learn about tuning, I recommend taking the P-term down to 2.0 or maybe even 1.0 and then up to just keep working it up 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, all the way up 7, 8, until you start to get to the point where the oscillations get so bad that you're like, okay, clearly this is not where I want to be. And really feel the effect that the different P terms have. If you do that with just a little bit of D gain, like the default of about 20 D gain on Betaflight, you'll, you'll, the copter will not really become unflyable until the p-term is, is really shockingly high. And you'll really be able to feel the effect that the different p-gains have on the flight experience. Uh, a low p-gain has a sort of a soft and disconnected feel, uh, and a, high, a higher p-gain will add a sort of a sharper, more precise feel up to the point where you start getting these oscillations. Um, in general, I think you want the p-term uh, high, high-ish, but not so high that it brings out bad flight effects. That's my opinion about tuning P. So I think that's a very good exercise for anybody to do who's learning to tune, and it's relatively safe to do because the P-term oscillations are gonna be low enough frequency that they're not gonna damage anything. That's as opposed to D-term oscillations, which can be so crazily high frequency that they can actually damage motors, smoke motors and ESCs. And that's going to bring us to the end of this one. Thank you for watching. Hope it's been educational. Uh, more are coming. Uh, I know that it's been a bit of a gap uh, between the last one and this one. Uh, kind of lost track of time there. Uh, I will do my best to get another one out relatively quickly and to try and make sure that the frequency of these matches uh, your apparent enthusiasm for them. Thank you very much for that. And as always, happy flying.